What do all these things have in common? Flirt, the number four, free.com, naked.com, stripchat.com, and Donald Trump. Well, according to new reporting out of The Guardian, they all got money from the same small bank in the Caribbean. I should note, NBC News has not independently confirmed this reporting, and Trump media's response to this reporting was to broadly threaten defamation without contesting specifics. But today, The Guardian reported that it has obtained leaked documents showing that in 2022, Trump Media, the parent company of Trump's Truth Social, received a total of $8 million in loans from a company called ES Family Trust. And ES Trust is actually just a shell company created by the co-owner of a bank in the Caribbean known as Paxim. Paxim is not only a bank primarily known for its work with the online porn industry, it is not even properly licensed to make loans in the United States. And the Russian-American businessman who allegedly arranged that loan is also allegedly under scrutiny in a federal insider trading and money laundering investigation. And, and, and the reason Trump's media company needed that $8 million in the first place, despite Trump's claims about being flush with cash, the reason the company needed that cash so quickly was because in 2021, the company had planned to merge with another company for a big cash infusion. But that merger was held up by the SEC because even that deal seemed shady. And it turns out the SEC was right to be suspicious. Today, two of the early investors in the company that Trump Media tried to merge with in 2021 pleaded guilty to securities fraud, or in layman's terms, insider trading that netted them tens of millions of dollars. We are going to get some very expert help with all of the specifics here in just a moment, but let's just zoom out for a second. Truth Social is largely seen as Donald Trump's biggest financial lifeline. Last week, Trump's net worth shot up by more than $4 billion because of his stock in the company. $4 billion because investors believe Trump's media company is a good investment. A media company we now know was in the red to the tune of $58 million last year. So shady loans, insider trading, and a company that is hemorrhaging cash and is somehow Trump's big financial lifeline. What is actually happening here? Joining me now is Drew Harwell, technology reporter at The Washington Post, who has been covering all of this funny money business around Trump media and Truth Social for years now. Drew, thanks for being with me tonight. I mean, I think, you know, given uh, Trump's claims publicly about how wealthy he is, um, why is it that a media company affiliated with Trump would be so cash strapped to the tune of $8 million that they would end up needing to be in involving a small Caribbean bank in the year 2021? Yeah. So, you know, remember back to 2021, um, Trump is the king of debt and he needed money badly for this company. You know, he was not able to get loans from traditional banks who had seen, you know, years of, of bankruptcies and failures on that end. January 6th had just happened a couple months prior. And so the company was really struggling. They were trapped in this, you know, mired merger process. They had no idea when it was going to unlock the money they needed. And, you know, suddenly here, this money uh, appeared. And I remember talking to a whistleblower from the company who remembered uh, being really off put by having this $8 million just sort of show up in their accounts, you know, named to this family trust no one had ever heard of, you know, connected to people that were total strangers to the company. And so it felt very odd that this money just sort of, you know, happened to come out right when they needed it. What, you talk about the people that were sort of involved in this loan. One of them, uh, Anton Postolnikov, I believe, um, co-owned the bank and arranged, uh, according to The Guardian at least, um, the loan. What can you tell us about him and his background? Yeah, so Anton Vostolnikov was born in St. Petersburg, Russia. He's the nephew of a very high-ranking Russian government uh, official for many years, uh, Alexander Smirnov. And, you know, we can see that um, uh, Pestolnikov was involved in this Paxson Bank. As you saw, you know, this was a bank that deals with uh, people who traditional banks typically don't deal with, including in the adult 
content industry. And, and Paxson Bank has been very clear that they are very proud to have them as customers. It's not a, the typical kind of company that would work with Trump or, or even a Trump media-like company. And so, you know, when Pastolnikov um, uh, was running Paxson Bank, you could see some of these wire transfer documents that I've seen, and I think The Guardian has seen as well, that show the $2 million coming from ES Family Trust. And it shows that Paxson is facilitating those loans. So for a while, we really didn't know what the connection was between ES Family Trust, which had very few fingerprints to, to trace back to, and Paxson Bank, which was facilitating this, this um, loan out of nowhere, except that the one name on the trust was a Paxson employee. Now we know from these, you know, this further reporting that Pastolnikov was was very involved, um, and it appears that you know he he could access the account or, or right around that time, and so it just raises questions of why this person who you know Pastolnikov lives in Miami Beach, owns very nice real estate in, in one of the priciest zip codes in America, why he was getting involved in this in this uh, business deal out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. How, why would a wealthy businessman with ties to Russia want to be involved with Donald Trump? I'm, not, I'm just going to let that hang there. I'm not going to ask you to answer that, Drew. But the, the two brothers who uh, uh, pleaded guilty today to insider trading, Michael and Gerald Schwartzman, can you talk about who they are and how they sort of fit into the broader picture of questionable financial dealings? Yeah, so Michael and Gerald Schwartzman. Gerald Schwartzman owns a furniture store in Miami. Michael Schwartzman is his brother and um, runs a venture capital firm that, like Pastolnikov's Pax and Bank, would deal with um, marijuana dispensaries. Of, of, of you know, if that surprises you, um, you know, by doing these cashless ATMs. So again, these were both. People, you know, Pastolnikov and Schwartzman dealt um, with gray market money quite often, and both lived in the Miami area. And they both learned about from from Patrick Orlando, who was the head of the company that ended up merging with Trump Media to take it public. Learned that this deal was was coming, and Pastolnikov uh, and the Schwartzman brothers all made exceptionally timed bets based off this insider trading uh, and insider knowledge and made tens of millions of dollars from it. And that's according to the FBI. And so the Schwartzman bro brothers, after they made these tens of millions, um, Michael Schwartzman also tried to hide some of this money, according to the feds. I mean, tried, you know, bought a yacht with it, tried to wash it through all these Swiss bank accounts. And so, you know, their change of plea this week to plead guilty was actually very interesting because it showed that the, that the FBI was onto something. Pastolnikov has never been charged, even though in the documents it shows that he made just as much in profits as, as the brothers have. And so there's been kind of an open question of, of what's going on there. But, you know, but those men were friends. Um, Michael Schwartzman would talk about, you know, knowing a guy, a Russian guy who had a bank in Dominica um, who, who could wash money for Russians and Ukrainians. And so, you know, the, the feds were obviously looking at this as a money laundering case with seeing all of this money, you know, hop from account to account around the world so it could hide where it came from. Well, there is certainly a lot more reporting to be done, a lot of questions that need to be answered. Uh, Drew Harwell, thank you for your great reporting on this thus far. We look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.